We generally assume that creativity is reserved for artists, musicians, or writers, but in fact, there are many situations in our daily lives in which we could take advantage of being creative. This could be anything from getting out of a sticky social situation, to coming up with new and innovative ideas at work, to making big decisions in our personal or work lives. In this video, we're going to explore three techniques that we can make use of to become more creative and use that to excel at what we're doing. If you're interested in becoming better, more productive, and more creative, then tap that like button and let's get right into the first technique. When we're faced with a new problem to solve, whether it's of a more artistic or a more pragmatic nature, our first natural response is to sit down and actively look for solutions to that problem. However, with this approach, we might soon find ourselves stuck and not knowing how to go forward from there. Instead, many creative people have realized that abandoning the problem altogether at that point of being stuck is most effective in eventually finding the solution to that problem. One such person is John Cleese, founder of the famous Monty Python comedy troupe and fellow Cambridge University alumnus. He's recently published a short and witty essay about creativity and how everyone can foster creativity in their lives and I found one of his examples very telling as to how we can use the unconscious, the power of the unconscious, to improve our creativity. In fact, John Cleese writes in this essay that he stumbled upon the idea that he could be a bit creative while at Cambridge when he was trying to write scripts for his comedy shows with the Footlights, the famous Cambridge theatre group. Now what he would do was to start writing his scripts in the evening, creating the character and uh, planning the storyline. When he would eventually get stuck and not know how to carry the story forward, he would just abandon it and go to sleep. The most interesting thing is that in the morning, without even thinking about it, at some point while making his breakfast or going to the first class, an idea would pop into his mind and that would prove to be the solution to his conundrum from the night before when he was actively trying to find that solution. And yet, despite actively trying, despite trying hard to find a solution, he only found it afterwards when he wasn't even thinking about it. Now why this is interesting is that we would normally associate sleep with an idle time, the opposite of being productive. There's been a lot of progress in sleep research recently, especially by Matthew Walker from the University of California, who has proven that sleep couldn't be farther away from being the epitome of idleness that we sometimes make it to be in our current modern work culture. Now, if you'd like to find out more about the topic of sleep and how it can make us more productive and more creative, then check out this video right here that I made reviewing Matthew Walker's book and distilling some of the insights from there. If you haven't already realized that, I'm sure it will open your eyes about how important sleep is and you'll never give up on that precious sleep time again. So basically what happened to the young John Cleese was that during the night and the early hours of the morning, his brain kept thinking about the issue, the problem that he was having in his storytelling, but it kept processing it in the background. And that's what we will call today the unconscious. Because the unconscious has many Freudian connotations, but we won't get into all that today. We're just taking the unconscious as that activity that happens in the background, in the back of your mind, when you're not actively thinking of a certain problem. Another such example that John Cleese gives is that at some point he started writing together with a friend. They had an entire script ready, but Cleese misplaced it. And thinking that his friend would be very mad if he found out that he doesn't have the script anymore, he just sat down and tried to rewrite that script. Now later he found the original script and when comparing the two, he actually realized that the one that he had written from his memory was an improved version of the original one. And this was for him another empirical proof that our minds process these problems without us necessarily thinking consciously about them. But one key thing that Cleese stresses is that the unconscious doesn't work with words. It's more like the language of dreams, it gives you feelings and images and associations. And you have to be open to understanding the language of the unconscious. So if we aren't open to that, if we're constantly distracted or in a hurry or looking down at our smartphones, there's no way we can make use of the unconscious in order to become more creative. So we should be open, we should be attentive, and we should pick up those hints that the unconscious gives us when it comes to problem solving. <laughs> 
Our second technique is inspired by a book by Guy Claxton called Hair Brain Turtle's Mind, which is also recommended by Cleese as a resource on how to be more creative. In the book, Claxton argues for the benefits of thinking slower and more intuitively rather than faster and logically, analytically and verbally. Now a lot of our education is based on analytical and logical thinking and we also have to make quick decisions and think really fast. That is what is rewarded in our education system. And I've made a lot of videos about how to do that as it's something we should all get better at because it's required of us. However, using this mode of thinking might not be that useful when optimizing for being more creative in our work and decisions. People who reach fast logical decisions might think of themselves as being more decisive and thus better than the others. But in fact, Claxton argues that there is no real reason why you would want to reach a decision before the set deadline. So he says that people who reach their decision the quickest are the weakest when it comes to dealing with that feeling of uncertainty before knowing exactly what will happen, before reaching the solution and the decision. On the other hand, people who think slowly, who take their time to ponder the issues right until the last minute before the deadline, are much more open to the feeling of uncertainty. And that's why they gain a lot of time in which they could come up with new ideas. As we said before, their unconscious has more time to serve them, more ideas and hints in the meantime, and also they have more time to gain new information and adjust their decision accordingly. So a feature of the creative mind is that it's open to the feeling of uncertainty. And this is something we might want to work on whenever we're uneasy about uncertain situations. If we can fight off that feeling of discomfort, then we've got the benefit of having more time, which is crucial when making decisions. And especially when we want to come up with a creative solution. Now when we're actively trying to solve problems and come up with creative ideas, there's nothing worse than being interrupted. Creative ideas take a certain amount of time to develop and during that time we should be in a state of deep concentration or deep focus and any interruption, even the slight one, can lead to another one and another one and it's this chain of interruptions that could be external, like the creak of the stairs or a notification on our smartphones, or internal when we start thinking about who might be coming down the stairs or thinking about the persons that are writing to us. When such a chain of interruptions is unleashed, it becomes a lot more difficult to go back to that state of concentration. And it's been estimated that it takes the average person about 12 minutes to focus again on the topic and about 20 minutes to reach the deep focus state. Now, what's really important when avoiding interruptions is creating a space for that. And if you'd like to find out more about how to create a space for focus, then check out this video that I made about how to read more and it's essentially how to build a space that's inviting you to read and to focus just on that one thing and reduce the friction of doing that thing and also increase the friction of doing anything else than reading or working. And I totally recommend this video if you're interested in this. So in order to not be interrupted, find a room far away from any other room, close the door, put a sign of do not disturb on it, and also make sure that in that room there are no other distractions. Maybe put your phone on a chair outside the room and make sure the environment is only inviting you to do that piece of work that you set out to do. Now in this video we've explored the power of the unconscious, the benefits of the turtle's mind and the imperative to avoid all interruptions. If you've got more ideas on how to be creative, don't hesitate to leave them down in the comments below. If you like this video, then don't forget to also subscribe to my channel. I make a lot of videos about productivity and study tips and life at Cambridge. So I'll see you on the other side and I'll catch you in my next one. Bye bye.